debt insurance. Maybe you just joined a new company and the renewal came up and the price is way more than they told you. You feel like you got scammed or you're with the current insurance and the price just went crazy. I'm gonna go over some suggestions and some personal opinions on companies I would avoid if you're going to shop for car insurance. Just so you know, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. I am actually connecting with a lot of mostly independent agents and some exclusive in certain states that are more competitive in each state. So if you are interested in getting a quote, I'll put that link in the description below. Feel free to fill it out and I'll have somebody get in contact with you. If you're in one of the many states that we insure, we may be reaching out as well. So one of the least favorites is Kemper. If you look them up, look at 2022 JD Power. They are listed as probably, actually not probably, they are listed as the worst rated company for claims. And you don't know how good of an insurance company you have until you file a claim. I just made a video, and I'll probably link that after this, where a customer is over 90 plus days, no payout, no contact, no response. Now, I don't know the situation 100%, so I can't say that's on them, but based on this report, they are not doing good. Also, they've stopped selling their preferred type of business. So Kemper is backing out of the market in most states and most areas. One of the biggest ones I personally would avoid. The next one is actually fairly decently rated as far as a company, but it's Allstate. And Allstate has been an amazing company. I actually have them with one of my companies and I don't hate them as a company. It's mainly price focused. They have probably broken up their model incorrectly in the past and they didn't adjust quick enough. They are all for profit. So they are, they know what they're doing. So they're smart, but they have raised rates 40, 50 plus percent in some states. And for that reason, they are not competitive in a lot of states. I give them props while I still say they're one of the companies I would avoid in general in most states. That being said, I actually work with people that work with Allstate and some states are incredible. Take that one with a grain of salt, but as far as the majority, I personally would leave them out of the bucket unless an independent agent works with them or an agent that can shop multiple companies so you can do a comparison. In our state, they're good with homes. So we're actually using them with a lot of the home stuff they do. As far as a company, they've changed some of their coverages. So they're tweaking the base policy instead of being like your everything's covered type on your home. They're doing more of we're not covering anything unless you ask. So we're gonna base the price down and lower the cost so the price is there, but we're gonna let you add them back on. The price was really higher if you compare the exact coverage from one to another, but they're allowing you to choose less to pay less. Sometimes that's what you need to get through this hard market that we're in, but because of that, they're one of my least favorites as far as price goes. USAA is probably one of my least favorite companies only because they're so freaking good. <laughs> and the fact that they were so good and they were on that pedestal, like if it, they were a retail person, they would be Amazon. And if we looked at all, like, all the problems that Amazon has, or they do this and they do that and such a pain, the problem that they have is they've fallen so far from where they were they're probably still in the middle or at least a little bit above average. So they're not a bad company, but the fact that they were amazing and they've lost all of that. So they've essentially gotten into this hard market and it hurt them as much or worse than other companies because they couldn't afford to keep up and have the service levels and have that commitment that they used to have. So for your veterans and for your military and anyone that could qualify, because you have to qualify to be part of them, they started getting the shaft. They essentially didn't get all these deals. They do still do discounts if you're on base and things like that. But at the end of the day, they've fallen very far, in my opinion, from where they should have been. So they're not a least favorite as far as I hate them. They're more of a least favorite as far as where they could have been. Companies I avoid, Geico, Progressive Direct, Liberty Mutual. And I'm sorry if you're my friend watching this, Farmers. I just don't like them anymore. They're bleh. They're just blah. None of these major companies have fallen off the face of the earth, but Liberty has just gone up in cost and they're essentially removing all of their sales agents into something called Comparion. They're technically competing against themselves, but in our world. So they're selling nationwide policies. They're selling progressive policies. They're essentially going against their own model, but in order to make it not look as bad or be competitive, maybe they're just trying to keep up with the market and not go under. 
is they're removing all of the Liberty agents, or at least the majority of the Liberty agents, and making them Comparion agents. It's the fact that the agents are selling cheap and not quality. So it's really up to the agency. And that's one of the reasons I'm working with multiple companies, trying to get companies that are at least been in business for a year. They show some understanding of their current location and the policies that they write. That's the link that I'm putting in the description. Is So I'm trying to get those companies so that you guys can talk to and at least work with the people that want your business and can help you. Why AAA? Because AAA is just old. I don't hate their product. But when I was selling them back in the day, they just have an old model. They just, a 10 pay on renters or home insurance is weird. Like why can't I pay monthly? Or having a, a policy that you have to have a membership, that actually strategically, if we ever do a video on that makes sense. But like all of the pieces that they have, their systems, their models, they're using the same system as nationwide, but way different, right? Their model to get new customers when the way they train their agents is just not the way I would do it. They really could set their agent in a seat in the call center style and let you call your current clients. If you're with AAA, you probably know. You probably got a phone call. Hey, so-and-so is no longer an agent here. We'd like to help you because they're really just trying to get credit for you becoming their new agent. Now, that's the AAA center. There's AAA agents that are different. There's two different versions, and I could become a AAA agent as an independent person, or there could be an exclusive that only sells AAA. I don't know why you would ever do that because it doesn't make sense. But the agents that are exclusive, in my opinion, are going to be the better fit. Going directly to AAA is not something I would necessarily do, even though if you go directly to AAA, I know you're going to go to the agent's going to sell it. But if that agent goes away, now you're just stuck in a null where there's no one that's really helping you. You can't technically go to any AAA office and they'll supposedly take payments for you. But they don't want your business if you're not going to let them become your agent. So if you're going to, then you can do an agent of record and switch your business over to that local office. Probably the smartest way to do it. Geico, because they honestly are very similar to Progressive Direct, where it lets the customer, which is you, choose what you want. It's that name your price tool that they used to talk about. And they've tweaked it to, here's some basic recommendations. And it's not even recommendation. It's just here's some coverages. They, bleh, they just throw these coverages out at you. And who knows what they are, if they're any good. I've done quotes with them. I've done tons of different quotes on their sites. And they're not, my opinion, the coverages I would ever give customers, but they're cheap. That's the thing. You can do cheap with any of these people. The thing that you're going to find is most of the good agents don't want to deal with that cheap world. Most of the customers, or the majority, not all of you, but a lot of customers that go for just cheap, the bottom dollar, bottom price, get me what I can get to survive, have billing issues and have a lot of questions and take up a lot of time. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're learning, that's what this whole channel can help you with. It teaches you how to understand your insurance, things like that. That's different. But if you're going to someone always having to change the due date on your policy, oh, it's the 5th, I got to switch it to the 8th, I don't get paid for three more weeks. Hey, I can't pay my payment this month, so I'm just going to have to cancel and I'll call you later. And now you pay $400 more and you're mad at them. So there's all of the issues that come with those bare bones type policy fits. One thing that a lot of these companies don't tell you is they actually charge you more the more you call them. So some of these direct companies have a discount for buying it online, but they also charge you more on the back end if you actually need their help. Don't get me wrong, you check this channel, one of my top companies is Progressive, but it's not Progressive Direct. And it's not because Progressive is a bad company, although there are some people that would say they hate them. <laughs> it's because Progressive shouldn't let you decide things you don't understand. I wish you could show proof that you understood it, so then they would let you buy the policy, but I get a lot of people don't understand it, so they just default to the cheapest thing they can find. And now we end up in the same situation where the claims aren't being paid or you weren't covered correctly, and no one really just sat down and explained it to you. Why farmers? Because I used to work there. 
<laughs> I don't hate them. They're actually a pretty decent company. A lot of their agents know what they're doing. But in my world when we were there, it was a little bit shady. I'm not going to lie. They taught us and taught me to teach others that, once again, phone calls were supposed to get them down to the bottom dollar cut their coverages out, make it cheaper than what they got. And that's fine in some cases, like maybe we need to raise a deductible, that's okay. There's As long as you can afford that and it's the right fit, right? But all we did was take off coverages, at least in the department I started in. It slowly started to turn into better coverage and quality, so it's not that they're still doing that today, but at the end of that process, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. I've got a friend that actually sells farmers and a few people that do, and they're pretty decent, but they are struggling because their commission's getting cut, so now they can't afford the quality of service that you typically would need, and that's where they have to hold that load for the company instead of them allowing you to go direct and have all of these good experiences. I would say that they are a good company in general, but because of a lot of the issues, they're not really a company I would look towards. So lastly, I'm gonna spout out a couple companies that this is actually the JD Power called the Auto Claim Satisfaction Study. This was from 2022, because they don't think they have a 2023 one yet. So this is like a research of all these companies, all these coverages, all the things, and these are the satisfaction surveys of customers. This is people that they don't like. So according to this, the top 10 worst, least favored is gonna be Kemper, Mercury, which we have a video about them, National General, AAA, which is Auto Club Group is the actual name of it, that's AAA, Travelers, Progressive, Safeco, Auto Owners, Nationwide, and Hartford. Out of those, I would take out Nationwide, they're decent. Take out Auto Owners, even though they're my competitor, but I've had good experiences with a lot of customers. The problem that they're losing is their prices are going crazy, just like everyone else. Safeco, once again, we talked about that's more of the agent than it is the company. Progressive, they are very clear cut. So if you don't buy the right coverage, that's why I don't like the direct model. There's no gray area with them. They're not as lenient as these other companies because they have to trim down to get those prices to where they need to be. Travelers, it depends on the state. So the state, depending, they're also very tight in some scenarios. I think the problem that a lot of people have with them is on their homes, they're super picky right now. I believe that they now have a rule at this point where you have to have a roof that's 10 years or newer. Otherwise, they won't insure you or they'll not renew you, things like that. So a little bit of hearsay, it's on the channels that I'm in. I can understand that. I can see where they're going with that. AAA, we just talked about National General. That's actually owned by Allstate. So National General Net Gen 360 or National General 360. That's what a lot of that Allstate stuff is going to become is Net Gen 360. We're actually in our state doing really well with them but we haven't had a lot of claims. So, so we haven't had really any complaints, but according to this, they're one of the bottom three as far as the satisfaction, followed by Mercury and followed by Kemper. Once again, this is the, some of the facts from JD Power and a lot of opinions of just my experiences working and researching a lot of these different companies over the last 12 to 15 years. Hopefully this was helpful. If you are looking to learn a little bit more about your insurance, I have a car insurance 101 that'll go more in depth. If it's home related, I have my home insurance 101 that I'll teach you the ins and outs and the whole policy that you need to understand what you're actually purchasing. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.